Hi, I'm Dustin, inventor of the Extra Core, and I have a new project that I'd like to show you. To start with, here's a project that I made with the original Extra Core. Uh, inside, it's got a 9 volt battery, a speaker, and a power regulator. And when you push the little button, you get the blue light and a little bit of sound effects. Now, this is uh, Uno clone, uh, Uno Arduino clone, and, and you can see that it's pretty big and it kind of wouldn't have suited this project very big because it would have had to sit on a pedestal underneath or, or whatever. And also, uh, they're a little bit more expensive than the extra cores, so it doesn't make sense to leave a nice development board with all the headers and everything like this in a uh, cute little toy project like this that doesn't have any real utility. So inside the project, uh, and I never mounted the stuff so that I could pull the stuff in and out for demos, you can see there's 9 volt battery, there's a speaker, here's the extra core, and you can see that I sort of dead bug soldered on the power regulator and the capacitors, which allows me to hook to the 9 volt battery and uh, have this compact little project. And I like this pretty well, and the extra cores have been very popular and they sold very well, but I really just didn't like this external power regulator. It's kind of a hassle to deal with. Um, people get confused about how to wire it up, so uh, it kind of had to go. So that's what the extra core V2 is all about. And here's my, uh, my quarter that I always use for scale. You can see it's the same size as the old extra core, but if you flip it over on the back, there's a power regulator. So I've taken one of the ground pins that used to be um, next to the FTDI header. This pin right here used to be an extra ground pin. And now it's the raw power input pin. So you can put anywhere from uh, 9 volts to 12 volts comfortably into this uh, power regulator. And it'll power the board. And then this VCC pin will come back out with um, uh, five clean volts, the power regulator, power regulator itself is rated to one amp, and the traces, the ground power and raw input traces, are uh, wide enough that you could run an amp of power through this board. I'm not sure that I would recommend it. I've tested it with 9 volt battery and running a few LEDs, and it doesn't warm up at all, so it's uh, totally adequate for most of uh, your Arduino tasks if you pump it up and run an amp through it. Uh, monitor the heat carefully and make sure that you aren't going to fry your chip. Also make sure with any Arduino project that you never sink or source more than 400 milliamp through the Atmega chip itself because uh, that's its maximum uh, rated power uh, source or sink. Uno boards, of course, have onboard USB and they have this FTDI chip that translates the USB to a serial signal, which allows you to program the chip. If you want to program an extra core, one of the cost-saving measures that I did was I left off the FTDI chip. Of course, that means that you need some sort of serial translator, so you're going to need an FTDI breakout board or an FTDI cable. This is an FTDI breakout board. It's a 5-volt board that I got from SparkFun. So you just plug the board into your USB cable and then you hook a header and you can solder a header on if you want but for a lot of these projects I just stick it in and hold it while I'm programming it. Stick a header right on the extra core and then you program it just exactly like it was in Uno. The only difference is you have to have this extra chip and you can see that I've plug programmed in the blink program and pin 13 LED is blinking away. Please help op support open source hardware and independent designers and inventors and buy an extra core board or two now.